Hi, welcome to educators.com. I'm Shavanti, your Hadoop instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss about the matrix joints, types of joints, max side joint, radius side joint, distributed cache, and we are going to see the and execute the program related to the max side joint with the help of the distributed cache. In this module, joints. It's not only in the map reduce, even in the RDBMS also we have the joints. So the concept is same. Suppose if you wanted to join or combine and process multiple data sets, multiple input files, if you wanted to combine and process, we are going to use the concept of joints. In terms of the map reduce, we have two types of joints. One is a map side joint, the other is a reducer side joint. In this map side joint, let's assume that we have one data set is bigger and the other data sets are very small. If we have such kind of the data sets, the input data files are available. What we can do is with the help of the map side join by using the distributed cache. The meaning of the distributed cache is whatever the small files we are having it, we are going to store all the small files into a main memory of all the data nodes. So that instead of performing the disk read and writes, it directly access the files from your main memory itself. That is how your map side join is going to be worked with the help of the distributed cache. And we also call this map side join as a replicated join because we are replicating that data set into all other data nodes. So in this map side join, as we are doing everything in the map side itself, so there is no need to have the shuffle and uh, perform the sorting of the data and move it to the reducer phase because everything you are going to process in terms of the mapper itself. Where in case of the reducer side join, whenever we are having all the files of the larger data sets, which are combined together with the help of a foreign key. Nothing but suppose if you are having the employee and the department table, if you wanted to join these two tables, you will be having the department ID in the employee table, which refers to that another tables column. And in the reduce side join here, large amount of the bandwidth is required because whatever all the mapper output results it has to be passed via the shuffle and sort and then the reducer phase we are processing is going to be done. So large amount of the network bandwidth is required to process. Unlike the map, map side join, you have no limitation of the size of the data set in the reducer side join. Because in the map side, if the file size is less than 100 MB, it is a recommendation to use the distributed cache. If it is more than that, you can use the reducer side join. In this module, we are going to see the, how to implement the map side join with the help of the distributed cache. In the next module, I'll be showing you how to write your code for the reducer side join. So, what is distributed cache? The distributed cache is a mechanism to store all your smaller data sets into your main memory of the each and every machine, the slave machine. What kind of the files we can store in all the data nodes are nothing but it can be any simple read only files like a, some data files, text files, or else it can be even the zip files, archive files. Any kind of the files can be stored as part of your distributed cache. Any of the place if you wanted to share some of your files across the, all the computers, in small properties file or any executable jar file, such kind of the files also you can store as part of the cache. 
and use the distributed cache mechanism to process store and process those files. So here in this example, we are going to deal with the two input files. One is the client details, another one is the my cache entry. There are one is a small data set, another one is the bigger, for example. So what we are going to do is in this client details file, it is having all the client names and what course the client has been joined and which country he is from. Like John, male and he joined the Hadoop and he is from US. Ram, male and he joined the height course and he is in, in that is the country code. But where are the country full details are available is nothing but the country full details, US is United States, IN is India. The full details are available as part of the another file called my cache entry. So what we are going to do is we are going to combine these two data sets and I require this particular client is from which country, the full name of the country that means the John is from the United States, Ram is from India, Rita is from Australia, like that I wanted to join and give those details. So for this purpose how we can achieve this is nothing but we will be having our driver class and the mapper class. As we mentioned that here it is a map type, there is no reducer. So in the driver class, similar to all other programs, we instantiated the job object, job name, mapper class and input file details and everything is same. Apart from this highlighted line which is job.add cache file. So what does this mean? Job.add cache file means is nothing but with the help of that, what is the file which you wanted to add into the cache that is into the main memory of all the data nodes, you are giving the path. If you see this, you have to make sure that this particular file name is already exists as part of your Hadoop distributed file system. And here, why I have converted into the URI is nothing but when you see the properties when you see the input file parameters related to the add cache file, it expects the URI. That is the reason why, but whatever the path which we are mentioning, this my cache country is the path, that converting that to the URI universal is what I don't And this is the only line which we will be doing with, but in the previous versions of the Hadoop, we used to have something called distributed cache dot add cache file, but now we can directly with the help of the job parameter, we can call the job dot add cache file. So how I am going to access this cache file from your mapper is nothing but in the mapper class, similar to other programs, we are extending the mapper, but instead of overriding the map method code, we are also using something called a setup. So what are all these methods that are nothing but? In the mapper class and the reducer class, we have three methods. One is the setup method, map method or reduce method, and finally cleanup method. So these three are the methods available inside your mapper and the reducer. So what exactly these setup method are this? If you wanted to execute your code only once, just before either mapper or the reducer executed, that code you are going to write in the setup class. Where in case of the cleanup method, the code in the cleanup method is also going to be executed once, but that is after executing your either mapper or the reducer. So here what we wanted to do is, we wanted to, we already added that with the help of the job that add cache file. So now I am going to write my code in the setup method. I am going to read that particular cache files with the help of context.get cache files is the method you can see it over here. This context.get cache files will give you all the cache files which are which you have added in this program. As we have seen, we have added only one file. So this is it. I am going to read that particular file itself. That means here I have given the cache files as the name of this, all the files are it. So cache files is the of zero, that means the first file which is going to be read now. 
and I'm created a path object because if you wanted to read any of the files, you must require a path object, and also you must require a file system object. So here, if you observe this particular line, what we have done is I have opened the file system descriptor fx dot open object path. That means with the help of the file system object, I'm opening that the path. In this get path, I'm going to get the my cache country details. And how I'm going to read one by one line and I'm going to process is nothing but with the help of the buffer reader. This buffer reader and the input stream reader are the Java classes, which will be helpful in opening up the descriptors with the help of the file system and reading out the input files, input lines line by line. And this buffer reader consisting of a multiple lines. So with the help of the loop, any of the loop you can use while, do while, or for loop. So with the help of this loop, what I'm doing is I'm reading this buffer reader content df dot read line, and whatever the line I got, I'm processing that. I'm placing that line details into my hash map. The hash map is nothing but it is consisting of a key and value. If you wanted to store any of the value. You can use this hash map and with the help of hash map dot put, you can place your values. On top of this, I have created a country map as a hash map. And if you wanted to place the values, I can put country map dot put is the method. I'm going to place it with the help of the key and value. The key is the short name, that is the US, and the full name is the United States, like that, it is in the country. In simple words, in the entire setup method, I'm going to read my cache file once and I'm going to place it as part of my hash map. So that in the mapper code, I can call this hash map and read that value whenever I require. If you see the map method, in this map method, I'm going to read this my client details file and as the, it is my input file separated with the comma and splitting it up with the comma. And I'm reading my client name, that is a stood name, and the country code, that is the last value, that is a part of the. And now, how should I get my full name is nothing but, if you see the setup method, I have already hash map. So with the help of the hash map dot get, I'm going to retrieve the value, which is there for the US, that is a, as United States. This is the line, country map dot get is the line which retrieves the value from the hash map. Finally, if you wanted to omit the records, context dot writer, my stood name and the stood country details. This is how we are going to combine these two data sets, student I mean, client details and also the cache country details. I combine it with the help of the distributed cache with the help of the hash map. So let me show you the execution of this particular program. To execute the distributed cache program, I have logged into my Cloudera Quick Start VM and the attached files which are client details in the my cache country, just drag and drop to your desktop. And now let's place these files into the Hadoop distributed file system before executing our program. So let's move to our desktop. I can see a file called my client details.txt and my country, my cache country. To place that into the Hadoop, copy from local, and the entire path is home, cloud era, desktop. And here I'm having client details. Dot .txt is the file, I wanted to place that into the client details input. This is my input file, which consisting of all the client details. And also now, whatever the cache country is there, that particular file also we must need to place as part of our Hadoop distributed file system. I Cache country dot txt. I wanted to place it under my cache country. So what we are going to do is whatever the 
content is there here. This particular file we are going to place it as part of my Hadoop distributed file system. Done, which we have placed. Now, if you see the program, I have created a class similar to all other classes, the cache. And here in the driver class, we have added the job dot add cache file. This is the file, my cache country is the file we have just now placed as part of our HDF class. And here, if you see the mapper class, I have a setup method inside this mapper. This setup method consisting of a creating a file system object and using the git cache file we have got all of the cache files and I have opened up the path to the first file and then with the help of the buffer reader and input string reader we are crossing our file and placing it into the hash map. If it comes to the map method, in the map method I am simply getting this uh, connecting to the hash map and getting the value whatever is stored there. Finally, I'm emitting these uh, client detail and also the client entry code as well. So here, if you wanted to export that into the jar file, let's call that as a cache dot jar. Just save everything. Now go back to your shell. Now execute Hadoop jar. Jar file name is the cache dot jar and the driver class over here is D cache capital D and capital C and the input file which we have given is this client details because my cache country you need not use it and you need not expand your program because in your driver class you have already specified the my cache country. So I am giving it as a client details. And also let's give it as output directory, something like output, the cache output or whatever the name you wanted to give. You can directly give it. Yeah, the cache dot jar is not phone because this was part of my home cloud era. Now it gets executed. Hadoop jar, jar file name, driver class name, the input file name and the output directory. One more time, I am repeating. You need not mention your my cache country details over here in the while submitting the case. In the program itself, in the driver class, you are specifying with the help of that cache file. Here, our cache file has been loaded and our program has been successful. If you wanted to see the output, you can go here. Hadoop FF hyphen ls yeah. as there is no user, so my file has been part hyphen m hyphen all zeros otherwise it have been part hyphen r hyphen so see the output directory you can see your client name and the full country details as well John is from United States, John is from India. So how exactly those two files combined is nothing but with the help of the distributed cache here and with the help of the hash map. This is how you will be processing your program. So here in this module we discuss about the purpose of the joints to combine and the process the multiple data sets and we understand that how the map set join can be used when one of the data files is little less, which is less than 100 MB, you can use your distributed cache. This D cache will be loading all of your uh, input file into your main memory of all the machines. And you can use this with the help of the job.r cache file. And with the help of the setup methods in the mapper class, we are going to write the context for the cache file, read it, and with the help of the buffer reader and the file system object, with the help of that, we are going to read our input file and place that into the hash map. This is how our distributed cache is going to be worked and this is the one of the best techniques to improve your performance because of this caching. 
Thank you. Let's start up in the next module regarding the red visual side drawing.